Hi and welcome back to a new video. You often see quite expensive hardware on my channel, such as this Corsair AIO. It's an H150i 360 Corsair Link, which costs in Germany about 225 euro. That's probably around 250 dollar. And often I ask myself the question, how much better is it actually than such a cheap AIO like this Gamdias, not sure how to say it, Aura GL360, which I found on a German retailer for 69 euro. That is quite extreme and we will also have the other extreme on today's video because I also found a thermal take AIO for over 400 euro, so almost 500 US dollar. And I just want to compare the functionality and cooling performance of those three. With their latest dedicated server, the AX162, Hetzna presents some impressive performance. You get the perfect match for your simultaneous workloads thanks to 48 CPU cores and 96 threads and up to 1152 GB of DDR4 RAM. An additional boost is the AMD V virtualization function, which is ideal with use cases involving virtualization and high performance computing. Hetzna is a leading hosting provider and data center operator in Europe, operating hundreds of thousands of servers. They are especially known for their innovative innovative server technology, affordable pricing, professional support and flexible customer service. They run their own cutting edge data centers in Nuremberg and Falkenstein, Germany and in Helsinki, Finland. Click on the link below and check out Hetzner's new and impressive server. I'm going to reuse this setup which I used recently to test the Corsair 2500X case. I still had the H150i in place. I just swapped the motherboard because I wasn't sure that the cheap AIO also comes with AMD mounting. On the box it only listed the Intel mounting. From what I saw, so I'm just going to use this Intel board with a 12900KS. It's not the latest CPU but should be able to deliver plenty of heat. I'm using the same paste for all AIOs because some of them come with paste pre-applied such as the Corsair H150i, but I want to have the same conditions for all of them, so I'm just using Cryonaut Extreme for all of the AIOs. Now I just have to convince Sheik to leave her cat bed because otherwise I think that might have a little influence on our results. I'm going to test everything noise normalized. The fans in the back, the two case fans are running at 600 RPM, so they shouldn't influence the noise reading but they will always be in place for all of the testing and I recorded the noise level in 30 centimeters distance and will normalize it to 40 dBA while the pump is running at a medium speed. Which means the QX fans are running at 1350 rpm while the pump is running at about 2700 rpm. All time classic we will start the test with Cinemage R23. As expected, the 12900KS does not disappoint and we can see a CPU package power draw of between 260 to 270 watt. And this is a good indicator of how much heat the AIO can dissipate. And in this very first run with the H150i, it is about 270 watt. And the CPU package temperature is at toasty 101 degrees Celsius. After a steady load of six minutes, we can see there's no big change anymore. And the continuous heat output and heat dissipation is about 240 watt. In a lower load scenario, such as normal gaming, we can see temperatures on the CPU cores between about 60 and 80 degrees Celsius. I will lock this scene with hardware info in the background and then get an average of the CPU temperature, so we will at the end have a better comparison value. Also quick note, before I took the measurement, I waited 15 minutes in the same gaming scene to make sure that the AIO is reaching an equal temperature and it doesn't heat up anymore. Now I'm interested to see how this 69 euro AIO, 360 AIO from Gamdias, 360 whatever, yeah, can keep up. We have a mounting kit right here. And we have three 120 millimeter fans that are looking quite interesting, RGB for sure. And interesting connector. Just wondering if there is an adapter included. Turns out we don't need an adapter because you can daisy chain those fans. And there is a SATA power connector and just a fan connector for probably fan signal. Now I have to figure out how RGB is controlled. After checking the website, it seems like you cannot even control RGB. Just seems like they will light, but yeah, you cannot change it. As you can see on the packaging, they are advertising mounting support for LGA 1700. 
However, there is no 1700 mounting kit included. Obviously, the back plate should fit, that's no problem. It's just going to be an M3 thread, same as like the Corsair AIO, so I will probably just reuse the Corsair back plate. But as you can see, there's only this one included for 11 5X socket. I think I'm just going to try these, even though, yeah, the height is probably not perfect because there is a slight height change between 11 5X and 1700. Similar to most other AIOs, it just comes with an aluminium radiator and the pump head doesn't feel heavy. It's It just feels pretty cheap, pretty low quality. The tubing is probably quite annoying to install. Yeah, it's very stiff. Not a fan. I'm just about to install the mounting brackets and you can see I had to add this metal bar and then yeah, add those screws. And as you can see, the screws are even too long and basically damage the pump housing by themselves. Just yeah, a little bit too long. Now, time to see what happens. At least mounting was so far not a big problem. Uh. I'm not sure if you can hear it, but something is making extremely weird noises. I'm not sure if it's the pump or the fans. Something is wrong with those fans, they're making extremely weird noises. The pump is detected, but there is no fan signal from the fans. The noise is definitely due to the PWM control. According to the website, those are PWM fans, but I cannot adjust anything, so I'm just going to with a DC mode. Holy shit, this is one garbage AIO. The PWM signal, that's completely killing it. I'm not sure if you can still hear it, but this beeping noise is insane. I had to go back from DC to PWM because I couldn't adjust the fan speed at DC and I have to fix it somehow because at DC it was just running at full speed and I want to see it at 40 decibels, which I am now at, but that's insane. That is insane. Let's check the cooling performance. Now time for Cinebench again. Obviously straight to 100 degrees Celsius and it's only 240 package power and it's going down. After about six minutes, a constant load in Cinebench R23. I cannot see any kind of change anymore when it comes to the heat or power dissipation, thus the dissipated heat. And you can see the CPU package power draw is at about 210 watt under load, which is about 30 watt less than Corsair's H150i. There's one more thing I want to add in. You might have noticed already in this video, the RGB is not working on the fans and I don't really know why. I couldn't find any kind of reason for it. There's no controller, no extra cabling, nothing. Also on the website, there's nothing. I mean, they state that those are RGB fans. And I can even see if I look through here that their RGB LEDs are underneath, but yeah, cannot get them to work. So that AIO is just a huge mess. In this gaming scenario, I'm honestly surprised how much higher the CPU temperature seems to be at least with a quick look, and I still have to go through the data, which we will then look at in the end. It seems to be quite a bit higher than Corsair's AIO, which I find surprising because, I mean, the load shouldn't be that high in the gaming scenario. After about half an hour of gaming, we can see a dim temperature of those Dominator titanium sticks of about 55 to 57 degrees Celsius. And in case you're wondering why I was talking about the memory temperature out of nowhere, the reason is this very expensive 360 AIO from Thermaltake. A few months ago I bought this already where it costs still about 400 euro. Right now it's a little bit cheaper but it's still one of the most expensive AIOs you can buy here in Germany. And the reason for this pretty high price is probably because it's not only a CPU AIO but at the same time it's also capable of cooling the memory. The thing is, the AIO is not really that special. It's a pretty normal standard aluminium radiator. It's slim, nothing special. Also the pump head pretty normal, except for that it has an LCD built-in, which is cool. And then we have the memory part, where you can see you can mount this theoretically on memory sticks. And I was just asking myself the question if this even helps anything, because honestly, if an AIO is running full load, like gaming session, long time, then the water is typically heating up quite a lot. And I was wondering if this helps. 
or maybe not. Now unfortunately this usually comes with a quite weird yeah, mounting distance for the holes. Just made for thermal take memory sticks and honestly who would buy thermal take memory? Especially for DDR5. I'm not even sure if those sticks exist for DDR5 with the heat spreader to mount this AIO on. But with those Dominator Titanium, theoretically I can take off the top part and then mount the AIO on top of this. But yeah, the mounting distance of those holes originally were different, so I had to modify it a little bit, cut down the outer parts, and then now I hope with some kind of modification I will be able to fit it on there. So I'm just removing the top part of those titanium dims. Those are quite tiny M1.5 screws, also quite long, at least for the thread. And then you can take off this extension on top, which is basically just a LED strip that's built in. And thus you could replace it with some kind of heatsink or the fins. There's even an additional yeah, heatsink available from Corsair. And this mounting distance from those two holes is different from the thermal take AIO, so I had to modify it. Since the stock M1.5 screws are incredibly long, I got those 3D printed yeah, huge washers, just like as a distancer or something. And hopefully with this kind of small mod, I will be able to mount it. One thing I still didn't figure out is in which order or location am I going to mount this? This looks a bit weird. It's also, yeah, I'm not that flexible have to check some pictures online. You know these protective films? If you follow my videos you might know that I hate them anyway, but you know those cases when the glue even gets stuck on the cooler? Man, I hate these. This is so annoying. Already now I feel like this is the most unpleasant AIO mounting experience I had so far. You always have this hanging in the way cannot really reach down there and at the same time the tubing is so hard that you cannot really twist it. And I have to add this thermal pad as well. This feels, yeah, it's just so much resistance. With this tiny screw, yeah, there's just no space. It's, yeah, not convenient. It's not going to win any prices for cable management. It's also not convenient to mount. We have two USB cables. What is this micro mini USB? We have to fit. This keeps turning and this is way too close to the fan. I have to extremely bend it, which is not cool, but yeah, let's see. The displays are even working with standby power. That is pretty cool. The thermal tech fans are surprisingly quiet. With 40 decibels, I can hit about 1500 RPM. But first, Cinebench. As expected, the temperature is shooting up to like 100 degrees Celsius, but we see a package power draw that is similar, maybe slightly lower than what we saw with the Corsair H150i. And again, after about six minutes of load, we can see about 240 watts that this AIO is capable of dissipate at 40 decibel, which is perfectly in line with the H150i. I would say there's not really a difference, maybe a few watt. This AIO is also running a few hundred RPM higher than the Corsair AIO at the same noise level, but overall I would say they perform pretty much the same. Also in Remnant, the result looks very much the same as with the H150i, but I'm recording this and then we will take a closer look at the details. Now that the temperature doesn't rise anymore, we see a temperature on one dim of about 47 degrees Celsius and 45 degrees Celsius on the other dim. So that's an improvement of about 8 to 9 degrees Celsius. If we compare all three AIOs with each other, we see that both Corsair and Thermaltake are almost identical. They're within 2 degrees Celsius of each other, and this could be due to the slightly higher fan speed of the Thermaltake AIO and also the higher pump speed, but it was just what you get at 40 decibels. But if you look at the cheap AIO, the Gamdias Aura GL360, you can see it's 10 degrees Celsius worse than the other two. We had two extreme AIOs and one more average AIO, but also more expensive AIOs in today's test. First of all, the Gamdias Aura GL360. This is an example of a product I would personally definitely avoid. Any kind of cheap AIO is typically something I would personally never use, simply because this kind of performance 
is in line with any kind of good air cooler you would get at the same price. For like 60 to 70 euro, you will get very decent air coolers that potentially won't run into issues you might face with these coolers, like pump noise, problems with weird noises coming from some PWM issue and yeah, some kind of possible pump failure in the future. Those are things you won't face with good air coolers. That's why if you are in a low budget situation, then just avoid any kind of cheap AIO get a good and decent air cooler, it will be a much better solution for you. If you have a higher budget and you want to go for a premium AIO like the Corsair one, even though it might not have the highest cooling, you will definitely pay a premium price as what is typical with Corsair, but at least you should not face the typical, yeah, pump issues, pump noise you have on uh, cheaper AIOs. So it's a product you can get, but you will pay a premium. Then the Thermaltake AIO without the memory, I would actually say it's a good product because noise-wise it was good, performance-wise it was also good. Just the memory part, I'm not so sure about because it's a lot of hassle to get it in place. And then also it's not really compatible to anything. I had to modify it to make it fit onto those Corsair dims, which is also a pity, it's something that annoys me these days in the industry that each vendor is thinking they're the best, they're just doing whatever they want without looking at the competition and what they might offer. Because those kind of dims where you can take off the top part have been around for such a long time, which means it just takes a few minutes of research to figure out what kind of yeah, dimension you should maybe use for higher compatibility because then you could fit it on more modules, like in this case, and maybe not only the thermal take modules. That's something that annoys me. Maybe that's something for a different video. But apart from that, the thermal take AIO works pretty nicely and uh, the noise level is good. The product overall seems to be nice. Also with those yeah, screens on it, cannot complain. But yeah, just avoid any kind of cheap AIO. That's typically just not worth it. I hope you enjoyed this video. See you next time. Bye-bye.